that's probably unfair a little bit because the Southern Conference has gotten so much better over the years. Jonathan Dudley will kick it off for Georgia Southern. Back deep to receive for Wofford will be Zach Gray and Brian Kemp. Gray number 30 at the lower part of your screen. He'll be back there along with Brian Kemp. Pretty good crowd up from Statesboro, Georgia this evening across the way on the visitor side as you probably will get a shot of that sun that's hitting them in the eyes, but not for much longer. Dudley is set. Georgia Southern approaches the ball. There's the kick, a high end over end kick, deep about 10 yards into the end zone. It'll be caught by Brian Kemp. He'll stay there. And Wofford brings it out first down and 10 at the 20-yard line of the Terriers. Here your here are your starting lineups for tonight's game. Georgia Southern actually uh, should be Georgia Southern on defense. Well, we'll take a look at the Wofford starters on offense here in just a moment. Well, we're going to, it must have been a penalty. The penalty marker on the field, so we're going to kick this one again. Here are your Wofford starters. Brad Beringcott will be one offensive lineman for the Terriers. Brandon Berry is a wide receiver, number 13. Derek Tiller, the left guard. Brad Anderson, the center. Marty Bauer, number 68, at right guard. Kevin Hodap, a right tackle, 78. And the tight end is number 86, Cody Garland. So we're going to kick it again, this time from the 30. Penalty marker against Georgia Southern. Not a good start for the Eagles because they had some costly penalties in that game against McNeese State a week ago in Statesboro. Right, there's no win tonight, too. That was an awful strong kick, but they're going to lose some field position maybe on this kick if he doesn't get his leg into it like he did on the, on the first kick. A little over-anxious. So Dudley will kick it this time from the 30, 10 yards deeper. Again, backers, Gray, number 30, Brian Kemp, number five. And for the second time, we'll kick this one off here in Statesboro. Dudley, high end over end kick. Again, a pretty good leg on this one at the nine-yard line. Kemp to the 20. Straight ahead, crosses the 25. Pretty good field position for Wofford coming up. The tackle by Georgia Southern. Lonnie Adamson, number 38, in on the stop for the Eagles. So Wofford will put it in play first down and 10 from the Terrier 27 28 yard line. They're on the left hash. It's interesting to see if they're going to. Brad Berencott will start at a tackle Tiller Anderson Bauer and Hodap up front for the Wofford offense. It's interesting to see that they've gone strong to the wide side of the field from the left hash. Quarterback is Collier, number 12, and motion to the far side will be Gabriel Jackson, and there's a give on the right side. This goes to Aaron Johnson. T.J. Rutledge makes the tackle from his middle linebacker spot, but he picks up about six yards. Defensive, defensive end Jack Sherman, nose tackle Brian Krantz, defensive tackle Jerry Barker, and defensive end Sheehan Solomon. Linebackers Jason Airwood, T.J. Rutledge, John Mooring, Joe Turner, and free safety A.J. Bryant, Tariq Muhammad, and Lewis Barr is the right cornerback. Collier, second down, four, tackle for a loss. John Mooring makes a tackle from behind as he gets the running back, and it's a loss of about three. So that brings up a third and long now for Wofford. That was out of the I formation, which is not in their basic offense. Now, I've seen two plays, and they haven't run the double slot with the two split ends. They've been strong right on the first play, and now they ran into the I from an I formation. Codger's going to go to the shotgun. He has one running back. He has four receivers, two left, one right. Third down and five. Rolling to his left is Codger. And it's broken up. Beautifully done by Jason Earwood from his linebacker spot. The pass was intended for number three for the Terriers. That's Michael Hobbs. And it'll be fourth down and five. So a good defensive start for Georgia Southern. That had six points all over it, but for the wrong team. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was six inches a little to the left, and we would have had six. That would have been six nothing real quick. He threw it right to him. Chris Tommy, number 31, will punt the football for Wofford. Back deep to receive for Georgia Southern, standing on his own 20-yard line. 
will be Teddy Kraft. And he shanked it. That one's not even going to cross the line of scrimmage. Terrible punt by Tommy right there for Wofford. Well, the home fans weren't roughing the punter, but the uh, the rusher knocked the, the search lagger into the punter and knocked him down. It wasn't the Georgia Southern player that did that. It was the force that he hit that uh, what we call a search lighter in this business. <laughs> and we welcome everybody who's joining us from the other programming tonight on CSS. Georgia Southern with a great start to this one. Three and out for Wofford and a bad punt. And they have it first and ten at the Terrier 32 yard line. Randy Smith, Walt Nadzak in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Welcome to our broadcast tonight on CSS. Inside hand off the gift to Austin. Austin near a first down, very close to the 20 yard line. Austin hard to bring down, making the tackle for Wofford, Jason Leventis from his linebacker spot. Well, the left guard for George Southern did a great job there. He sealed that off inside. Offensive starters, the line, Jensen, Travelis Sims, Lance Wayne, Chad Moat, and Russell Orr. And at the backfield, the receivers, Teddy Kraft, Reggie McCutcheon, Marquise Maynard. They give it again to Austin. Austin down near the 10 uh, to the 15-yard line, picks up about five more. The Wofford defensive starters, they run a three-man front, Eric Hutchinson, Caton Bethay, Leighton Baker. They have four linebackers, Kyle Horn, Josh Smith, Justin Franklin, Jason Leventis, and Dedrick Stuckey. Brian Ford, Dan Tavani, and Brian Kemp are in the secondary. Second and about five and a half, the pitch wide goes to number 21, and he's stuck pretty good, stays on his feet shy of the 10-yard line. Interesting, they haven't run inside the tackles to Bethay yet. Uh, I watched him in the last play. He, he got rid of that center pretty good. They've been running to the outside, and it looks like Wofford's uh, trying to jam them up inside, and that's why mm -hmm. the, uh, they're, they're looking to run outside. Jim Thurman made the tackle, and it's going to be third down and less than a yard for Georgia Southern. The nose of that football resting at the Wofford 11-yard line. Hand off, Austin, the keeper, the flip back to number 31. That's Lenon Jefferson, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. And Georgia Southern is making quick work out of Wofford here in the first few moments of the ball game. He just barely got in, and the ball landed on the goal line in his arm, but it was a good call. They ran the option finally now. They pulled it out of there and the pitch, a dangerous pitch, I might add. That had fumble written all over it because the quarterback was being hit as he pitched the ball. Tremendous fake to Austin. He faked me out and then pitched it back to Lenon Jefferson, who scored from about 11 yards out. 6 0 Georgia Southern in to attempt the extra point is Dudley, and the kick is good. With 11.59 to go here in the first quarter, Georgia Southern has taken the lead over Wofford. It's 6 0 Georgia Southern. Short drive, but it counts. And we'll take a timeout. We'll be back with more from Spartanburg in just a moment. Good start in this game for Georgia Southern. They scored an 11 yard run to cap their first possession offensively of the night. So Jonathan Dudley, who kicked the extra point, is going to kick it off again. Kemp and Gray back deep to receive for Wofford. That's a strong start for Georgia Southern, and especially to take the momentum out of Wofford in their first home game here and uh, for a nice crowd. They need to, to put some first downs out there and, and run the clock. I think the key to this game is running the clock and, and possession. Dudley kicks it again this time, very similar to the first kick. This one's going to go out of bounds inside the five, so... Wofford will probably choose to take it at their own 35 yard line. That's a no no on yeah. the kickoff. You just don't do that. You don't give a team 35, give it the ball in the 35 yard line. Wofford has it first down and 10. The Terriers were three and out on their first offensive possession, and Georgia Southern drove 32 yards for the game's first touchdown. We have just under 12 minutes to go here in the first quarter, and the Eagles with a 7 0 lead. 
Wofford on the year one and one. They lost to West Virginia last week, 35 to seven. And West Virginia beat uh, another Division One A team today, a little bit worse than they beat uh, Wofford. Cogger out of the shotgun, running this wingbone offense. There's the handoff to number 34. That's Corey Dunn. Dunn crosses the line of scrimmage, gets about three. Jason Earwood makes the tackle for the Eagles. Looked like a little confusion defensively at Georgia Southern there. This is assignment football when you're playing option teams. You, you got to decide whether you're going to take the fullback away, take the quarterback away, or take the pitch man away. And that's why it's so important that they concentrate on their assignments and not look back into the backfield with the fake. They gave down the line of scrimmage and four more. So it's second down about five and a half. In motion to the near side comes Gabriel Jackson. Long count by Collier. And off first man through very close to first down yardage. The ball carrier Michael Hobbs gets the call. Actually, it's uh, Aaron Dun Aaron Johnson gets the call. He picks up four or five more. It's third and one. He's short of that first down. Georgia Southern's been uh, rotating guys to the outside, uh, depending on personnel. I imagine I'm trying to pick up what they're doing, but obviously they're discouraging the strong formation side. Third down and one. Wofford so far 0 for 1 in third down conversions. Collier. That's the first time they've been in that double slot. And off first man through. This is Michael Hobbs. He picks up at least two, maybe three. Gets the first down in the game. The first first down of the game, mind you, for Wofford. Earwood makes the tackle for Georgia Southern. But it's first down and 10. Terriers about two yards shy of midfield. He's going to pull that ball out and pitch it here very soon. Quick huddle. Wide slot this side to the Wofford left. Collier gives to the second lead for a huge hole. It filled up quickly, however. Number 26 for Georgia Southern in on the tackle. That's a lot of long motion there. Marquise Maynard makes the tackle along with John Mooring, but pretty good yardage. I thought that one was going to go for a lot, but it, it Georgia Southern filled there, but it, it quickly. Was closed fast. Pick up a four, second down and six. Clock moving, 9.50 to go first quarter. A five-man front there for Georgia Southern right now. They're coming off the corner. They hand the football again to Corey Dunn. Dunn gets a couple of yards. Got it on second effort. He hits inside the 45. Tariq Muhammad makes the tackle for Georgia Southern. And Wofford is faced with its third, third down. This time third and about two. This is their bread and butter play, though. They're, they're, they've faced this short yard so many times. And they actually, they probably believe they're in, knowing Mike Harris, he thinks he's in four down territory. <laughs> Man in motion to the right side. That's Gabriel Jackson. Comes back near side. Collier changing to play. Hands to the keeps it himself has the first down still on his feet inside the 35 great job of ball faking that time by Collier who kept it himself and picks up much more than he needed for the first down. Little quarterback counter you don't need a halfback in there just to fake one way and keep it yourself. The line of scrimmage is just shy of the 30 yard line for Georgia Southern man this would be big if Wofford could drive it down and tie the game and look at the time they're eating off the clock that's the premise in this game started both teams like to eat the eat the clock keep the ball out of the other team's hands Collier option and right keeps it himself slung down still on his feet he's going to lose about three they're going to mark his forward progress to the 35 but that's going to be a loss of four Brian Kranz among the white shirts for Georgia Southern in on the tackle. That was a great effort uh, offensively, but sometimes when you make that effort, you end up losing a few yards instead of running north and south. He started to run a little east and west. Second down, 13 and a half, 14 yards. Line of scrimmage is the 34 of Georgia Southern. Great job of the Eagles. That was a sign of football at its best right there. Exactly. Stay home. That's the key. 
Georgia Southern may have jumped. Collier with a fake under pressure. Gets away from one man. Throws over the middle. Incomplete. His pass was intended that time for Cody Garland. I'm really surprised that they're throwing the ball. Even there, I, that's four down. He had three, da three downs to make that first. They're probably out of field goal range right now, and, and they may not punt from there. And if they do, they might kick it in the end zone. So I'm a little surprised at uh, throwing the ball on second down. It goes, it goes against the percentages. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you see the numbers on the evening for Josh Conyer. Actually, that's on the season. Third down, a long 14. Swing pass, nice catch by Cody Garland inside the 25. He's going to be shy of that first down. Oh, oh they gave him a good mark, though, at the 20. I believe he's got it. Where they marked the ball, he's got it. The official was right there. Yep, first down. He needed about 13 and three-fourths yards, and he picked up 14 down to the 20-yard line. He kicked his leg loose from a tackle eight yards back. It was a great effort. Wofford has converted four of five third down opportunities. Hand off to the running back number 34. Corey Dunn still on his feet inside the 20. Ran a lot, but didn't get much yardage. John Mooring stops him inside the 20. They're going to mark it at the 18. The speed that that defense shows in the secondary is great. There are the numbers for Corey Dunn. 20 rushes, 112 yards. He scored twice this year for the Terriers. We're under seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Georgia Southern leading 7 nothing, but Wobbert threatening. Second down, eight inside the 20. Collier out of the shotgun, split backfield, hands it to Dunn again, down inside the 15, down to the 10, down inside the 5, first down, Wofford. That formation was the spread offense you're seeing all over the country now with Urban Meyer now at Florida and, and the previously at Utah. That was a spread formation and very effective, almost a draw play. Jason Earwood saved a touchdown, but it's first down and goal for Wofford. They say a knee touched inside the five-yard line. Collier hands it to the first man through number three. That's Michael Hobbs, and he has a touchdown for the Terriers. Yeah, that offensive line really came off the ball there and drove Georgia Southern right back on their haunches. A very impressive series for Wofford as they converted three of four third down opportunities, actually three out of three in that particular drive. It's seven to six with 6.23 to go. Nick Robinson will attempt the extra point to tie it up. And it's there. 6.23 to go here in the first quarter. Georgia Southern 7. Wofford 7. Southern Conference football tonight on CSS. Your source for sports in the Southeast. There's a look at the Wofford sideline after a very impressive offensive drive to tie the game with 623 to go. Michael Hobbs on a five yard run to tie it. The way these two teams play possession ball, it may come down to the last possession in the fourth quarter. Because it doesn't look right now, and based on what we've seen so far, that they can stop each other. And they should because they know they run the same offense. Right. Well, you'd think that defense would be aware of it. You know, they practice against it every They're day. They're so aware of it. They're both scoring. <laughs> <laughs> Kicking off for Wofford is Nick Robinson. He's going to drive it deep one yard into the end zone for Georgia Southern to return it. And that is Lewis Barr, and he's stopped shy of the 20-yard line. Great hit. Bar to the 18. It'll be first down and 10 for Georgia Southern. Andy Strickland makes the tackle for Wofford. But poor field position here for Georgia Southern. Much worse than they did the first time they had the ball when they took over at the Wofford 32. Exactly. That was a short drive. We'll see the long one now. <laughs> <laughs> the line of scrimmage is the 17-yard line. First down and 10, Georgia Southern. Jason Foster opens at quarterback, 5-9 sophomore. Austin hits that line so quick. I mean, you, you have got to shed the block to make the hit in that three-yard area from the line of scrimmage awful quick to stop him. Kyle Horn makes the tackle, but not before Austin picks up four. There's a look. And 
and we bring it back to the line under six minutes to go second down and six Austin the lone setback and of course there are two slot backs in this, in this strong right in the wide side of the field pick up motion quickly they give it to Austin who gets to the 25 it'll be third down at about three for the Eagles I don't think they're going to throw the ball. Away. I think they're going to come at you again with Austin. Third down and three of coming for Georgia Southern. Jermaine Austin's numbers for the year. That's two games averaging 8.2 yards per carry. He scored twice. That's awesome. Awesome yardage. Crowd's Big. getting into this right now, Andy. Big third down and two. Georgia Southern. They give it to Austin. He's going to be stopped. Shy of the 25. Wofford got him. Guess who? Buffet. Jake he, he, Buffet. Was, he was leading that posse. Jim Thurman also there. He was the supporting member of that posse. Well, Buffet stood the center up yeah. and, uh, and just jammed everything up inside. Fourth down and two. Georgia Southern's going to punt. Speaking of punting, the two of the best punters and certainly in the Southern Conference and maybe one double A football are in the game. Dan Jordan will punt there his numbers averaging 41.7 yards per kick first punt of the game upcoming for Georgia Southern. Good rush he gets it away a high spinning kick it's going to hit at the 37 yard line and going to roll inside the 25 great punt by Jordan finally stopped at the 23 and Wofford puts it in play from that point with 413 to go in a 7 7 game here in the first quarter. You know, Chris Tommy, the punter for Wofford, had four punts of 50 yards or more last week against West Virginia. And you take the average of Jordan, they're the two best punters in this league right now. Line of scrimmage is the 22. They mark it at uh, the Terrier 22. So the Terriers put it in play their first or their last drive at the 35. So again, they don't have quite as good a field position as they did the second time they got the football. First down. Josh Collier, the quarterback. They hand it to the first man. Drop Loose ball. football. Georgia Southern says they've got it. We'll see. That would be up. Yep. Said he got it back. No, I think he fell on it. A little penetration there by the, the, the right defensive lineman. Loss of a yard that time for Wofford. It'll be second down and 11. But it could have been much worse. It could have been first and 10 with Georgia Southern going the other way. That would be two great breaks. He never got the handoff. Looks like he put the ball in the hip. That was Hobbs. And put it in the pocket. Hobbs, who scored the touchdown on a five yard run a moment ago. Shotgun, Collier being pressured, runs as yardage out near the 30. Stopped there by a whole host of white shirts. Number 52, Jason Earwood. T.J. Rutledge was there. George Southern lost contain on that rush, and you can't let this guy get it outside of you on the on a pass rush. You got to keep him in the box. He's not as effective in the box. He gets in that corner one on one in open space. Uh, he's, he can run. He's got good moves. Third down and about uh, two and a half, three yards to go for the Terriers. Let's say third and three. Cotton. Wide receivers right and left. Takes the snap, keeps it himself, and Georgia Southern is right there to stop him shy of the 30. That's going to be a loss of two. Rutledge and Earwood make the tackle for the Eagles. Georgia Southern did a good job of stretching that thing out, just run, making them run uh, east and west. And they loaded up this side. Georgia Southern had that one smelled well, that, out. Yes, number 42. I've got the name there, Rutledge, Randy. Yeah. Rutledge, he did a great job there. Played laterally down the line. Loss of two, fourth and four. It'll be Nick Robinson back to punt. He'll stand at his 15. And they block it. And Georgia Southern's going to take it at the 30-yard line, just shy of the 30. Uh, and that's the second block punt or partially block punt for the Eagles this evening. And they'll take it at the 33. I, I, George Southern better hope that whistle blew. 
Yeah. It's a live ball. <laughs> well, it's a live ball behind the line of scrimmage. It, was it past the line? Yeah, I think it's it was. Past the yeah. line. But they just let it sit there for a while. Now, this is two breaks in a kicking game that Georgia Southern's gotten. Two big breaks. The Eagles took advantage of the first break, and with 2.01 to go in the first quarter, we'll see if they take advantage of the second one. Austin inside the 30. Austin good yardage, five, maybe six yards. We'll see where they mark it. With the pressure, go back to that punt, to the pressure they're putting on. They, you got to be a two-step punter. That's a, you can't be a three-step punter and get that ball off. But they made the tackle. Clock moving now, 142 to go, first quarter. Georgia Southern second down and about five and a half, not quite six yards to go. Foster inside the handoff to Austin and the black shirts are there to meet him. Number 21, Kyle Horn is there. So is Caton Buffet among others and it'll be third down upcoming for the Eagles after a no game. Kyle Horn's filling in for Derek Newberry, who's injured up at uh, West Virginia last week, and so far he's doing an excellent job. Third down and four. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. The pitch goes wide to Marquise Maynard. First down, then some. Inside the 15, inside the 10. Down to the five, first down, Georgia Southern. That was all speed, all, all speed, tremendous quickness. Casey right. Cooper saved a touchdown for Wofford. Great balance, great quickness to hit that seam. They mark it at the five and a half yard line. Inside the six, it'll be first down and goal for Georgia Southern, and the clock is moving under 40 seconds to go. Well, you know, you can't go short yardage defense here yet either because of the of the option to run outside. You can't jam the middle. And off Austin. Loose football. Picked up and recovered by Walker. They stripped Austin of that football just as he took the handoff from Jason Foster. We need to look at that one, Randy. I'm not sure he ever had the ball. Looked like the ball was on his hip. That's why it ended up on the ground. Good and penetration by the Wofford defense, though. And Caton Buffet and was right there to fall on he's, it. He's in the air. He's in the zip code. <laughs> <laughs> so a big break for Wofford after the second breakdown in their kicking game. The Terriers get the game's first turnover. 22 and a half seconds to go in the first quarter. Georgia Southern 7. Wofford 7 will take a break. We're back. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've had a great first quarter. Walt, it's 22 and a half seconds left, and Wofford just had the game's first turnover, taking it away from Georgia Southern. That's one of the keys to the game, protecting the football. Collier with the football. Sophomore quarterback, 6'2", 195 from Bonaire, Georgia. First down and 10 at the six-yard line. Inside handoff, big hole. Hobbs gets good yardage out near the 15. That's great, about six. Great block by Wofford Center. That's Brad Anderson. They're doing an excellent job in the, from tackle to tackle right now. Jason Earwood makes the stop. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. It's been a good one so far. We got three more just like them here in Spartanburg. Georgia Southern with a 7-7 game with Wofford. And the Terriers have the football when we come back to start the second quarter here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Carolina Ford, driving the Carolinas, by BB&T, Branch Banking and Trust, and by Food Line, extra low prices. Welcome back to Spartanburg, South Carolina. Randy Smith, Walt Madzak with you here is the Terriers fell behind 7-0. They tied the game 7-7, and they have the football second down and about two from their own 15-yard line. Trying to dig out of a hole here field position-wise after a great stop down near the goal line. Inside handoff, Hobbs close to the first down. Great second, maybe third effort may have gotten it for him. Let's see where they mark the football. It is a Wofford first down. 
That offensive line is really blowing the interior of Georgia Southern's defense off the ball. Doing a great job driving their legs, keeping their head up. First down out to the 19 and a half yard line. Collier, the quarterback. Hobbs and Dunn are the running backs behind him. Slot right in the motion is Aaron Johnson. Long count. Second man through, Dunn, not much there. Maybe one, maybe two yards. I expect to see Wofford will run that formation. They got a, George Southern has an inside linebacker out here in the slot, and that's a bad matchup for, uh, for Georgia Southern. That could come back. Well, he's going out of the game now, number 52. He's leaving, and they're bringing a the defensive back in. Shaheen Solomon makes the tackle after a three-yard pickup by Dunn. So it'll be second down and seven for the Eagles. Line of scrimmage at the 22-yard line. The pitch, Jackson around the left side, first down out to the 35. Georgia Southern's John Mooring knocks him out of bounds right there, but not before he picks up a first down for the Terriers. The wideout had a great block downfield. Just kept that Georgia Southern defensive back busy. Two. That's the third first down of this drive for the Terriers. 13-41. It's out now to the 34-yard line. There's Gabe Jackson's numbers. Seven rushes, 104 yards, 14.9 average. That's quite an evening. Yep. He didn't play last week against uh, West Virginia. Handoff goes to Dunn. Dunn to the 40, to the 41. Tripped up by T.J. Rutledge. And an eagle slow to get up. That's 55 for the Georgia Southern Ball Club. Larry Beard, backup defensive end. He's going to come out. Second down and four after the six-yard pickup by Dunn. That's the strong side. A little shotgun here. Collier again with a long shot. Gives it to Dunn, right side. Georgia Southern's there. He breaks a tackle. First down, still on his feet near midfield. Tremendous second, third, and even fourth effort that time by Corey Dunn. Lewis Barr from Georgia Southern ran right by him. He was jumping around to come on the corner blitz, and he ran right by the ball carrier. Watch this on the, on the replay. Number two. He ducked inside to avoid contact with the blocker and opened up the lane. First down, Whopper just shy of midfield. They have really eaten up the yardage in this drive. Hobbs, small hole. He slips through it. Picks up about three. Brian Krantz from his nose tackle position for Georgia Southern makes the tackle. It'll be a pickup of about three. Down to the 48. Second down, seven. Georgia Southern seems to be struggling with what to do right now. They, they're changing personnel almost every play in this defense. And, and, and right now, they're in trouble. They're short a man up there on the left. Collier with Jackson in motion. They pitch it to him. He's got yardage. You can see that coming. They were, they, they were short a man over there. Somebody was lined up in the wrong place. Out of bounds at the 40. It'll be another first down for the Terriers. I don't think that was an automatic. That was probably a pre-called play, but they sure. Well, they hit those yeah. holes and go around that end so quickly. Well, they had one man out there, and they had three guys leading the thing. So somebody lined up wrong for George Southern. You can't give them a corner like that. It was just a toss sweep. First down, 11.40 to go. Collier, the quarterback. Option right. Keeps it himself. Good yardage inside the 30. First down again, Wofford, as he gets pushed out of bounds at the 28. Another great job by their wideout. David Willingham makes the tackle, shoving Collier out of bounds, but not before he gets another Wofford first down. 20. Number 23, Randy, just, he just completely faked out. 
They're out of, Georgia Southern secondary seems to be a little out of control. They're not breaking down and making the, the offensive guy make a move. They're committing themselves early and opening up seams. First down Wofford at the Georgia Southern 28. We've had surprisingly few penalties in this game so far. Inside handoff, hops inside the 25, good yardage, six, seven yards. Down to the 24-yard line, A.J. Bryant makes the tackle. That's the beauty of this offense. They've been hitting tackle to the outside, tackle to the outside, toss sweep, now they run inside. Let's take another look. Good block by the center again. He's doing an excellent job. Second down, about four and a half. They mark it at the 22 for Collier. Collier, done, left side. Penalty marker goes down at the line of scrimmage. I would assume this is on Wofford. Tariq Mohammed and Lewis Barr make the tackle for Georgia Southern. We might have a hold there. I was just going to tell you what a great job uh, Brad Anderson's been doing at center. It looks like that might be on him on the hold there. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think he's coming out of the ball game. It will be against Wofford. They're retreating now. So instead of second and five, they're not going to be faced with second and about 15. It's an interesting poll we could take with the fans and sports writers about whether to announce the player who committed the foul. That would be a normal NCAA football. You're not announcing who did it. I guess that's a. Let's see if we can find out who. Well, I think it was 71 to start with, and he fell off the block. Well, if it was 71, it was Brad Anderson, the guy that Walt's been bragging on all night. Second down and about 13. We you gotta be careful with the snap now. You got a new center in there. Two receivers left, one right. Now Jackson in motion to the near side. Collier's going to change the play with 10:31 to go in the first half. Yeah. Big pile up. Georgia Southern says they have it. And a penalty marker is also down, I think, on the play as well. So we'll have to unstack and see who has the football, then determine what the penalty is. I'm pre looking pretty good as calling that with that new center in there. Right. <laughs> I, <laughs> luck, just lucky, but, but more often than not, if you don't have any chance to take a couple snaps with a new center, that happens. Yeah. Luckily, Wofford got the football back. And no penalty. Well, See, the ball never came up, and you're looking at the replay. The ball never came up in the quarterback hand, quarterback's hands, and he was pulling out a little early as well. Line of scrimmage is the 31, and Wofford wants a timeout with 9.53 to go here in the first half in a 7-7 game. While they take a break, we'll take it with them. You're watching Southern Conference football tonight on CSS, Georgia Southern and Wofford. We'll be back. New name, new time, same great show. Danny Sheridan returns with Talking Football Sundays at 7 only on CSS, your source for Southeast Ports. A long time Sheridan poll. Yeah. yeah. And they had a great game uh, just wrapped up about 40 miles down the road, didn't they? Miami and Clemson. Three overtime. That would be heart stopping for a lot of people. Yeah. Now, Miami wins at 36 30. Third down, 13, Collier. If there ever was a passing situation, this would be it, but no, they run it. They give it to Jackson. Jackson out of bounds at the 25. He's going to be stopped short of the first down, picked up about six. Lewis Barr shoves him out of bounds, but now it's fourth down and about seven. Georgia Southern is really having trouble outside the tackles. I believe they could tighten up a little bit because of, they haven't thrown the ball much, but they're sure getting beat on the corners. Well, they're not going to kick it. They're going to go for it. Fourth down and five. From the 22, this is Collier. An unbalanced line left. And now Collier calls a timeout. He had four, like seconds, he yeah, yeah. four seconds left on the delay game clock, and uh, he probably didn't like the defense. 
Nine forty seven to go. Wofford uh, calls it second time out of this half. The Terriers have one remaining. Georgia Southern has all three of theirs left. You know, everybody tries to bait the defense to jump offside and take the five yard penalty if you have to and then kick the field goal or punt. But I don't think this was a situation because yeah. they really truly are in four down territory. There's Mike Ayers, 2003 Coach of the Year in the Southern Conference. What a great job he's done here. Oh, yeah. Well, he's done a good job everywhere he's yeah. been. Class gentleman, too. Very, very good job. And how about having the ex president on your staff as director of football operations and Joe Lassane, the former oh, yeah. president? Yeah, I'd love to work under those conditions. Now, I'd like to get, I'd like to get my former general presidents at the Citadel and tell them, let's go get put the coffee on for the staff this morning. <laughs> I'd love to do that. Well, Wofford is going to get the football fourth down and about four and a half, five yards to go after a seven-yard pickup a moment ago by Dunn, or I was Jackson, Gabriel Jackson. Tell you what, they got so many great running backs in this game for both oh, yeah. teams. It's hard to, you know, a lot of teams just have one or two and they give it to them 30 times a game. And they don't need much space to get into either. No. Scat backs. For, we used to for call. two colleges at this level, there's some excellent football players down there. Yep. Fourth down, less than five. Collier out of the shotgun. A lot of time on that game clock as well. Georgia Southern thinking a corner blitz. And now Collier wants a timeout again. They're just trying to get him to jump off sides. <laughs> well, they used two timeouts and didn't yeah. get it done. Well, there's nine minutes left in the quarter, too. I, I, I don't know what's going on with that now. Wofford's out of timeouts for this half. And Georgia Southern, fourth down and five. Well, it's too close to punt, probably a little too far might to be, kick a field goal. So you got to go for it. Yeah, it's uh, 22, 32, plus 10, 42, 45 yard field goal. Yep. Actually, uh, yeah, 40, 42. Maybe they don't, don't have confidence. The kicking game's really hurt them tonight. The punting game. They have these two. They have this great punter. He's not even punting for them tonight. The one the average 50 yards of punt. That's Mike Seawack, uh, Coach Mike Seawack. Yes, it is. On the sidelines, talking to number 54. Coach Seawack really took some hits on the email. We oh, were talking man. with Nate Hurst, the radio announcer. It's a tough business, Mike. Hang in there. Yeah. <laughs> After that loss to McNeese State last week in State. Well, they had a touchdown call back in the last minute and a half of the game, and, and then quarterback scrambled and got out of field goal range where they could have gone overtime. Now we'll play it fourth down. They need to pick up five for a first. Collier dropping back, looking, throwing down the middle. Caught. Incomplete. Tapped away I, I, by Georgia Southern and still almost caught by the intended receiver, Cody Garland. Almost intercepted, bobbled, and almost caught for a touchdown. Tariq Muhammad knocked it away. That would have made the highlight reel. Let's take another Here it look. Is again. Tipped. Oh, had it, had it in his stomach. That was when he's Finn on the Allen. ground. Yeah, tight end Finn Allen, 6'5 freshman who almost made the catch for a touchdown. There's another angle. Almost made it. Back to live action. Georgia Southern takes over at the 23. First down. Not much there for Austin, who comes off the field limping a bit. That's not a good sign. Nope. He yeah. had a uh, Mild injury concussion were, last yeah. week, and he was probable as of Wednesday or Thursday, and he's, he certainly is playing tonight. They can ill afford to lose him in this game. Second down, nine from the 24. Jason Foster faking, throwing, caught. First down, Georgia Southern to the 45. Caught by Tim Camp. Brian Ford back defending for Wofford, but Georgia Southern comes out throwing on a second and nine, and they get the first down. In my game notes, I said, who's going to allow the other one to sleep to hit a long bomb here? It's just a matter of time because they get you coming up to the, the option, and he ran by the corner, and the safety had to come over and make the hit. 
You know, these coaches talk about running the football, but they have all they both had quarterbacks that can they can throw it. Oh, they just choose to run it. Foster straight ahead. But as Woody Hayes used to say, there's two things that can happen and they're both bad. <laughs> Leighton Baker makes the tackle for Wofford. On the carry, got about a yard. It'll be second down and about eight and a half, nine. Georgia Southern seems to be substituting by uh, yardage and down situation. Is Jermaine back in there? Uh, don't think so. Andrews is, was in it uh, fullback. Give it to, no, that's Austin. Yeah, Austin inside in. midfield into Wofford territory. Gets about three, maybe four. Georgia Southern needs to make a few first downs and give their defense a rest. Their defense has been on the field an awful long time tonight, and it was 95 degrees when the sun was out earlier, but it's still probably 80 down there in the field. And Kyle Horn makes the tackle as we see Austin hits the line so. hard. He's still turning those legs, so he can't be hurt that bad. Third down about four. Here's the pitch. It goes to... It's like he made the sticks. Marquise Maynard, I think, is the ball carrier. We'll have to see as they unstack. It's going to be very close. We'll see. They're going to call time, and now it is a first down. You know what's interesting? They really haven't run the option pitch much tonight. They're, they're having to toss sweep to the corners and trying to hit the seams, but they haven't pitched the ball out of the true option very much yet. Georgia Southern moving the football. 7.25, clock moving. It's the 43-yard line. And the ball carrier, Marquise Maynard, 26, limps off the field. They have a little depth. Uh, they do have depth at running back. Nobody to compare with Jermaine, but uh, they do have depth. The keeper, not much at all for Foster. They stack him up at the line and shove him back. Now, we've got the Georgia Southern coaches in the booth next to us, but I, I bet, bet one of them will call down there and say, tell that halfback he was at a pitch phase there and that's why the ball wasn't pitched to the outside on the option he got a little wide and, little, and a little far out that relationships two two yards deep and four yards wide that's that's the typical aim point for the pitch man second down and ten no gain for Foster Georgia Southern breaks from the huddle six and a half minutes to go in the first half seven seven we're tied Motion goes Reggie McCutcheon inside the handoff. Austin inside the 40. Jim Thurman makes the tackle for Wofford. Stay conservative there. It's a gain of five. It'll be third down and five for the Terry uh, for the uh, Eagles now at the 38-yard line. They're running three three players in at a time here. There goes Austin out of the ball game. Big play right here. Third and five. Foster rolls right, looks, keeps it, got a block, has the first down inside the 33-yard line. We'll see where they say he went out of bounds, but I believe he has the first down. He needed five. I think he picked up six. He knew exactly where those sticks were. Did a little dance over there on the sideline to stay in bounds. Brian Ford knocks Turns him the corner. out. Great block there on the, on the cornerback by the... Did he step out of bounds there? Before he made the first close. We will never know, will we? Not without replay. <laughs> <laughs> Foster with a fake pitch. Back to throw. He's got a man wide open at the 10. Inside the five. First and goal, Georgia Southern. Now that's twice now. At the key point, they're worried about the run, and they get hurt by a medium-long pass. Raja Andrews makes the completion. They mark it at the four. So that's a 24 yard gain and it's first and goal for Georgia Southern. Great protection that time as well for Georgia Southern. Sure was. <laughs> Inside it goes to Austin, takes it to the one. He's shy of the goal line. It's like about a foot short. You'll probably see this one again. That was Brandon Andrews on the carry. There goes the short yard, his defense on the field for Wofford. Second down and goal. Five minutes to go.
Georgia Southern trying to regain the lead. They had a 7 nothing lead as they scored on a 32 yard drive in their first possession. Now we got five different players coming back in for Wofford. Is there a penalty here for 12 men on the field like coming out of the huddle? No, uh, I don't not. think so. No penalty no. markers down. Second and goal from the one. I believe he's in there, but it's, there's no call yet. We'll see as they unstack. They went on a quick count there. We tried to get Wofford before they were set. Didn't make it. No game. Picked Third up, and goal. Picked up about half a yard at, at best, maybe a foot. Big play upcoming. Third down and goal. You can bet they're in four down territory. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Well, they cross midfield. They're in four <laughs> down <laughs> territory. Right. Both sides of the ball. Quarterback, Quarterback keeper, touchdown. Keeper. Foster. Favorite old wishbone play. Oklahoma made that one famous. Just follow the fullback through the hole. Georgia Southern regains the lead at 13 to 7. 4 10 to go in the first half. And on to attempt the extra point is. Jonathan Dudley. You know, there's been a lot more offense in this this half than the scoreboard shows going up and down the field. A lot right. of yardage gained, even though it's kind of low scoring. Dudley's kick is there. What a great and job the holder right. did there. Four minutes and ten seconds to go. In the first half, Georgia Southern has regained the lead on a one-yard run by Jason Foster. Eagles lead it 14 to 7. We'll be back. On Monday, NASCAR expert Dan Elliott makes a pit stop on Sports Night, and college football analyst Chuck Oliver weighs in on today's college matchups. Catch Sports Night Monday at 6 and 11, only on CSS. It's your source for sports in the Southeast. 14 7, Georgia Southern has regained the lead. It really easy could have been 21 7 when they coughed up the ball down scoring territory oh, yeah. a long time ago. But Wofford's, uh, they've had the same misfortune. Moving the ball all over the field. Well, the first Georgia Southern lead. Wofford face they answered tied the game on their next possession. Let's see with four minutes and ten seconds to go in the first half if they can do it again. It's critical for Wofford not to get two touchdowns or very many points more behind. It's tough to come from behind with the ground game. Dudley's kick this time high but short taken at the eight yard line by Gray or Kemp rather Kemp to the 25 crosses the 25 and Wofford gets it in. Decent field position, first down and 10. The last scoring drive for Georgia Southern ate up a lot of time. 12 plays, 78 yards, five and a half five minutes. Five and a half minutes. <laughs> and the Eagles lead it 14 to 7. And once again, there's a penalty marker and offsides on the kick by Georgia Southern. So we'll back it up to 30. We'll kick it again. Kicking game's been a little shaky on both sides. For, I know it's the third game of the year, but but uh, it's been a little shabby tonight. A couple blocks, kick out of kick off out of bounds. What we forget though is is sports writers and sports announcers and whatever. These are college kids playing a great game. Oh yeah, and uh, they're playing their hearts out. Yeah, it's so easy to be critical. We're not down there. Dudley will kick it again this time from the 30. This time he actually kicks it better. Kemp <laughs> back to the three. Up the middle. Stopped as he crosses the 15 yard line. 28. <laughs> and Wofford gets it in poor field position this time. Chris Covington makes a great tackle for the Eagles as we're now under four minutes to go. Well, we'll see if Wofford will try to run the football or are they going to throw it? Well, they've got <coughs> almost four, four minutes, so they're going to do a little both. Collier calls the signal, sophomore quarterback. Options right. 
keeps it, crosses the 20. Good yardage to the 25. It's a pickup of about eight. 23. Tariq Muhammad makes the tackle for Georgia Southern. 23 was at a pitch phase, or I think Foster would have pitched the ball out to him and had a big play. Right here where they close on him, a pitch of ball. Nothing but white stripes down that sideline. Pickup of eight, second down and two for Wofford. Well, I tell you, running or passing, they're using up a lot of the clock between <coughs> plays right now. Right. The drive started. There was over four minutes. They run one play, and it's down to 324. Double slot. Motion to the near side comes Johnson back to pass. Georgia Southern has pressure. Got a guy open, but the pass by Collier was overthrown by about five yards and out of bounds. A little curl pattern by that uh, what we used to call fade pattern, but split end ran him off and the halfback came around. He was open. One for five. 14 yards. Intended receiver was Aaron Johnson. So it's now third and two. Wofford's got the edge and yardage on the ground, but George Southern has it throwing the football. Collier, 3-10 to go. Clock stop, third down and two. Collier gives to Hobbs. Hobbs has the first down, I believe. Yes, he does. He gets out near the 27-yard line. David Willingham in on the tackle for Georgia Southern, and the clock stops with exactly three minutes to go in the first half, and it's a first down for the Terriers. Anderson's back in. Anderson's back in there at center, and he, he does a pretty good job. He, he gets out on that linebacker in this play. First down. Wofford Collier with the football. The quarterback out of the shotgun. Back to throw. Throws it. Incomplete. <clears throat> what a great hit. Oh, man. He just got nailed by Tariq Muhammad. I'm surprised there was not a flag on that play. Wofford had eight men on the line of, line of scrimmage. Pass was intended for Matt Bevan. And, and he got his shoulders watch turned. Their hit right there. Vicious hit. That's uh, that's questionable because he was committed to the hit. Second down and ten. Inside, Hobbs takes the handoff. Not much there. He gets maybe a couple right up the gut. Clock moving 229. Jack Sherman makes the tackle for Georgia Southern. So now Wofford is faced with a third and seven. This is a big play if they don't get the sticks. Season number 34 rushes for 158 yards. Hobbs is averaging 4.6. One touchdown. Third down, seven. Big play for Wofford because if they don't convert here, they're going to get it back to Georgia Southern with about a minute and a half to go. The way the kicking game's gone, they want to make those sticks, and they certainly did right there. First he's down. Got, he's got the first down. Aaron Johnson, the ball carrier, gets the first down yardage. He needed seven. He picked up eight. John Mooring makes the tackle. And even more important for Wofford, not only did he get the first down, but he stopped the clock by going out of bounds with 154 to go. It's at the 40-yard line. Yeah, the clock, would, if he'd have stayed in bounds, they'd have just had the little toss sweep. They own this outside play. Georgia Southern's not getting out. Just nice tackle. No help Moore. coming from inside when the corner uh, holds it up. Slot left, receiver right for Codger, 154. The play action, they got a pressure pass caught. Nice catch by number 17 of the Wofford Terriers. Wide receiver for Wofford, that is Andy Strickland, and it's a first down, a pickup of about 19 yards, down to the 41. What a great pick play. This looks like a pick and roll in basketball a little bit. They... Nice play, play action. Ooh, he got hammered that time by number 54. They ran a nice crossing pattern, picked each other, picked the defender, the defenders off. Dusty Riddick put the hammer down on uh, Collier. Collier in trouble, and he's going to be sacked back at the 47-yard line. 
Well, the Southern came hard with an outside blitz. Shannon Williams, the nose tackle, was the first man to get there, but he had help. He had help from the outside. Almost got a leg. Loss of six. It'll be second down and 16. Number 90. Also, Jerry Barker, the 90, was there. The quick pitch. Johnson gets away from one man. This is Jackson, rather. Great effort inside the 40. He's in bounds under a minute to go. What and a difference a week makes with him at a running back. And keep in mind, Wofford is completely out of timeouts. The 34 just went off, or 24 just went off, holding his arm. Clock moving, 30 seconds to go in the half. Collier got a chance for another couple of plays if he gets a first down. Caught. Caught by number 13, Brandon Berry. Gain of about six. Out of bounds he goes, stopping the clock with 20.2 seconds to go here in the first half. They can't afford to throw it inside. They've got to throw it at the outside. They have no timeouts left. Those timeouts they used some time ago, uh, about 10 minutes ago, really, uh, they could have used one or two of those right now. 20.2 seconds to go. It's fourth down and four. For Wofford. Line of scrimmage, and now a timeout is called. I thought they had no timeouts left. Well, time. they didn't call one. The officials called it, and or Georgia Southern called it. Okay. Timeout, Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern called the timeout. We'll keep it here with 20.2 seconds to go in the first half. Well, some other scores of interest today. Miami beat Clemson just down the road here, 36 to 30 in three overtimes. <laughs> and now we're going to take a break. 20.2 seconds to go. Georgia Southern with a 14 to 7 lead over Wofford, and we'll be back at Gibbs Stadium in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Well, we have 20.2 seconds to go in the first half. Georgia Southern with a 14 to 7 lead. It's fourth down, about three and a half to go. Looks like Georgia Southern's man to man in the second day. Hobbs gets the carry, spins forward. I think he's short of the first down. They're going to call time to check, but I think he's going to be at least a yard short. Yeah, he, they're, they're changing possession. Right now, Georgia Southern's offense is coming out, and they're going to take a knee. Oh, yeah. That's going to be the last play of the half. Larry Beard makes the tackle for Georgia Southern. Pickup of about three on the play, and they needed four. So Georgia Southern to the line, 14.1 seconds. Eagles lead it by seven. I don't think they're going to throw the ball, do you? I don't. <laughs> well, I thought it might be dark. <laughs> Foster with a keeper gets a first down and they'll get another play 5.7 seconds. So Seawack is not playing conservative. Well, for him, he's not. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, he's not. They call time out here. They, they want to get some more points. Well, they're going to have time for one more play. They might go deep and, and throw the Hail Mary down there. Yeah. Let's take a look at the last play. Well, you said, well, he's not going to throw it. Well, well, maybe that was a quarterback draw to the <laughs> counter, counter draw by the quarterback. I tell you, he got two hands on the ball when he got in a little trouble out there in the corner, too. I guess they told him to protect the football pretty, pretty well. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Seawalk said, go back to throw. If nobody's open, you run it. <laughs> and hang on to that football. The biggest chance I ever saw Coach Seawak take on the golf course was putt from off the green. <laughs> <laughs> well, Georgia Southern took a 7-0 lead. Wofford came right back and answered. Georgia Southern scores again in the second quarter. They lead it 14-7, and Wofford has been, un been unable to answer the second Georgia Southern touchdown. coming out now you, you can bet Wofford's going to play deep in the secondary <laughs> surprising me they played a lot of too deep back there Wofford is actually 
has 12 first downs to eight for Georgia Southern in the game. Georgia Southern has 50 passing yards, but Wofford has 210 yards of total offense. And I think that's the difference too. They're going to they're going to throw it deep. Back to throw. Foster and a heave over the middle. Intercept. Wofford's got it. Down he goes at the 23, and that'll be the end of the first half. And Georgia Southern will get the football to start the second half. A little risky there. If that had been run back all the way the opposite way, I think they might have regretted that. Yep. Well, we're at halftime. Georgia Southern with a 14 to 7 lead over Wofford here in what has been a good first half of football in Spartanburg. Stay with us. We'll be back with our halftime activities at Gibbs Stadium right after this. <clears throat> Well, we're almost set to get the second half underway. What has been a very good football game, but it has been very basic. And but there's you know, two of the best running teams in one double A football. Right. You look at the st statistics over the last several years. These two ball clubs have dominated one double A rushing stats, and they've also been winning more games than most other schools. So there must be something good about it. Secret to success. Yeah. Georgia Southern with a seven point lead and. The Eagles get the ball to start the second half. This first possession is very big because if Georgia Southern can score and go up two possessions, critical defensively for Wofford. Yes, Just absolutely critical not to let Georgia Southern get any more momentum or much of a bigger lead. It's tough to come from behind with a running offense and get two or three touchdowns back in the second half. Teddy Kraft and Lewis Barr back deep to receive for Georgia Southern. Kicking it for Wofford. Is Nick Robinson. And the foot is into the ball, and the second half is underway. Kraft at the three. Cuts back left, got a hole out to the 25, and that's where Georgia Southern puts it in play. First down and 10 with a 14 to 7 lead as we start the second half. Let's see if Wofford uh, changes in the, anything in the secondary, whether go to zone or play some man to man. To, support the passing game depending on what their philosophy is. First down and 10 Georgia Southern with the football. Jason Foster opens the second half at quarterback. He's gone all the way. Jermaine Austin is the fullback. Austin quick hitter. On his feet out near the 40 first down Brian Ford makes a shoestring stop of he, Jermaine Austin. He got a shoestring and the white chalk line got the other foot. Yep. <laughs> that was so close. Pickup of 13. Watch this. What a great effort defensively and what a great effort to stay on his mm -hmm. feet. That could have been a, a disaster for Wofford. Line of scrimmage is just shy of the 40 first down and 10 for Georgia Southern. Foster, loose football, Wofford has picked it up. That is the third turnover of this game for Georgia Southern. That's exactly what Wofford needed. They needed a break. And you know who got a hand in that again? Wouldn't be Mr. Bethay, would Mr. it? Mr. Bethay. He Let's just take got another a, look. He got a hand in there. All right, bobbled the snap. Making the recovery for Wofford was number 55. I believe that's uh, oh, it's Hutchinson, number 53. This changes the whole complexion of this half right here. Oh, yeah. If big Wofford play. can score. Collier opens at quarterback. Hobbs is a running back. Jackson is back there. Options. Pitches are back on the reverse. This is number 13. Brandon Berry running room. Berry to the 20. He's got room to the 10, the 5. He's out of bounds inside the five. It'll be first down and goal to go for the Terriers. You could see that coming from left field. What a great block on the corner outside. A great block to stay in with that defensive back. Great call that time of the coaches as they He's did a super lazy. job of, uh, yeah, handing that football and right off. here. That block right there. We need one of those pointer things. Oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> We'll see if we can get it in the budget. <laughs> game. First and goal line of scrimmage is the four. Hand off and it is a Wofford. Oh, they're not going to give him a touchdown. I was going to say touchdown, but he made 
almost to the goal line. It'll be second and goal from about the one foot line. You talk about one play that changes the whole momentum of a ball game. That that fumble could be it. Hobbs was the ball carrier once again. It'll be second and goal. Collier. Oh, and like Georgia Southern jump. Now were they drawn? Unless he moved that ball, but it looked like he uh, was in the neutral zone. Wofford is signaling. Is it uh, signaling? It is against Georgia Southern. If it is, they're going to move it about three inches. Not very far. You can take all the chances you want down there to get the jump because they can't move the ball. <laughs> can only go an inch from the white line. I'll, I'll tell you what, it looked like there might have been a little movement, but not it not where the Georgia Southern player went offside. Right. Second down and goal. Georgia Southern sends one receiver. They keep everybody else in tight. Two slots and a running back. Hobbs is the fullback. Codger, the keeper, touchdown, Wofford. Terriers punch it in after the fumble. The third turnover of the game for Georgia Southern, and just like that, Wofford is an extra point away from tying this game up. He's limping a little bit coming off of there, Foster is. He's, he's struggling a little bit. He's really limping. Kicking game hasn't been too good for Wofford today. There's no guarantee in these, these extra points. Uh, not that they're not capable of kicking, it's the blocking. Robinson makes the extra point. We're tied at 14, 13, 28 to go here in the third quarter. A lot of time left in this one. A minute and 32 seconds. And it's a tie ball game. We'll take a timeout with them. 14, 14. We are tied, and we'll be back in a moment. The well, since being named a starter at Florida, quarterback Chris Leak has thrown a touchdown pass in 23 straight games. That's the longest active streak in the nation. But did he lead the Gators past the Volunteers? Catch Florida and Tennessee Monday at 8 on CSS. Wofford has tied this game in a minute and 32 seconds after the Georgia Southern fumble. Now the pressure's back on Georgia Southern to get the momentum back. It was on Wofford to start this half. They got their break and they took advantage of it. Now Georgia Southern has to control the ball for a while and get, keep their defense off the field. Robinson will kick off. Back deep. Lewis Barr and Teddy Kraft. It's a nice high kick. You he get, good, that you get good coverage yep. on that. You're not going to run that one out. That's a great kick. About six yards deep in the end A little zone. action going down there, a little extra. The enthusiastic blocking, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look at that minute on, and 32 Dave. second scoring drive for Wofford. They put it in the end zone as quarterback Collier go, scored three plays, 40 yards. 101, one minute and one second. Yep. Not bad. That's a sign of a good football team, though, to be able to do that. Capitalize on mistakes. Now the sign of another good team would be to come right back and get control of this game again. Inside handoff. Austin crosses the 25, gets maybe six. Justin Franklin makes the tackle for Wofford. Andy, there must be uh, tendencies in the scouting reports because on first down, Austin has more room to run inside the tackles than he does on the later downs. So they must be expecting the wide pitch or the option outside early down a distance tendencies must play into that second down and four after a six yard pickup Austin again the carrier as the first down crosses the 34 to the 35 that was Brandon Andrews not Austin Brian Ford makes the tackle but Georgia Southern gets a first down well, they just keep plugging these running backs in, don't they? Yeah, and I'm wondering if Austin is 100% uh, because uh, he, he's missing some time. They're rotating him in and out a little bit. They have been lately. Just Andrews again, this time nothing there. No game. The front of that Wofford wall, Jim Thurman, the senior linebacker, makes the tackle among others i think georgia southern wanted to pitch that ball in the option but the corner out here played a great jet played a, a 
played it flattened out and the pitch the pitch wasn't there and that's why he gave the ball in the read. Second and nine they give him about a half yard. Foster inside handoff again this time to Andrews. Picks up about four. Leighton Baker makes the tackle. Georgia Southern face now with a third and five. Georgia Southern has had real trouble getting any option pitch off tonight. They've, they've run inside and they've really thrown for their big plays. The crowd's getting into this third down situation. This is important for momentum for both teams right here. Third down and five coming up for Georgia Southern. Line of scrimmage of the Eagle 39. There's the quick pitch. And he's going to be hit shy of that first down or very, very close according to where they mark it. I believe he's shot. Uh, he Justin looked, Franklin looked short. knocked him out. We'll see what kind of riverboat gambler Coach Seawack is right now. Roger Andrews, the ball carrier. We're going to take another look right here. I don't think they're even going to measure this. Now they're going to call time. Georgia Southern sending the punt team. On. The officials are going to get another look at it. He says, yep, you're right. It's fourth down. Fourth and about a yard. Uh, uh, is the punter Tom's? Uh, punter's Dan Jordan. Dan Jordan. Jordan's going to stand inside his 30. Got the wrong team. Sorry about that, Randy. <laughs> it's all right, coach. <laughs> I called the wrong play. Brandon Berry is going to stand inside his 25, and this time a better punt by Jordan. Berry lets it go out of bounds at the 20. So good field position, or at least decent field yeah, position. 31 for yeah, 31 yard kick on end over end. 11 Over minutes, 19 to... seconds to go here in the first or in the third quarter. We're tied at 14. Hold that thought, Walt. We'll talk about it when we come back. Georgia Southern and Wofford all tied. 14. We'll be back to Spartanburg, South Carolina right after this. No. Well, we have 11-19 to go in the third quarter. We're tied at 14, and Wofford takes over just inside the Terrier 20. It was a short kick there, and they're really not the stats that the, the punting uh, that George Southern was earlier in the season in the previous game. Collier, they got the pitch covered. Turning that corner, though. Gabe Jackson out of bounds at the 31. The perimeter blocking down. there, Randy. The perimeter blocking was great. When they turned that corner, they stretched it out just like they were taught inside, but the outside corner got blocked. Joseph Turner shoved him out of bounds, but not before he gets a first down. Right there. Gabe Jackson picks up about 10 and a half. It's at the 30. First down, Collier, the quarterback. He's gone all the way, 6'2", sophomore. Maybe uh, audible in here, down to three in the changing game the play. clock. Hobbs, the inside. Not much. Expert gets about two, not much there. Not much. They're just setting up. They're gonna, they're gonna come out and pitch that ball soon off that. Jack Sherman makes the tackle. Second down, seven. They give him three. Clock moving, 10.48 to go in the third quarter. 14-14, we're tied. Looks like the left guard got overpowered a little bit for Wofford there. He got stood up. Second down, seven. A little confusion in the Georgia Southern defense there. To Corey Dunn. He breaks a tackle, crosses the 35, tripped up. Number 42, T.J. Rutledge was among the white shirts making the stop, but now Wofford faced with a third down and about three. Yeah, well, you talked about this earlier about the good running backs in this game. They've been a, a too deep on both sides. The running backs with some power and speed and quickness. At this level of 1AA football, uh, it's really rare to have so many good running backs. Under 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Collier, third down, three, 
Keeps it himself. Big hole. First down. Crosses the 50. Still on his feet. Out of bounds inside the 35 yard line. Lewis Barr shoves him out as Wofford has a first down inside Georgia Southern Territory. A couple great blocks, what we call slow blocks on the corner. Just tying up, getting in the chest of the secondary people. No contain inside whatsoever. Just well executed play. Some, some defensive lapses, reading keys. It, it's really hurting Georgia Southern right now. First down, Hobbs the ball carrier inside the 35, down to the 31. And a penalty marker dropped at the line of scrimmage. He didn't see any movement there unless he got holding on, on, the, on Wofford. Officials are discussing it. Let's see what it's about. Illegal motion Illegal against motion. Wofford. That'll cost them five. They picked up about four on the gain by Hobbs. So instead of second and six, it'll be first and 15. I think they're going to put the ball in the air unless they absolutely have to. They haven't been very successful throwing the football. To my knowledge, I didn't check the stats at halftime on passing, but they only had one completion that I know of in the first half that I can re recall. Back it up to the 40. It'll be first down, 15. A shorter man that's uh, walking up now. Cogger, man into motion, coming to the near side. Johnson, Cogger, quarterback draw inside the 35, down to the 31, 32. He got that yardage back. I'll tell you, I like the, uh, I like my man Anderson. Inside, he got another good block. Watch the block by Anderson. There it is. He stood him up. Mm -hmm. Creating some seams in there, and his backs are quick enough to handle it. Second down and about six, maybe six and a half yards. Line of scrimmage is the 31. Plenty of time on the game clock. Down to 13 seconds as Cogger changes the play. Gives it to Hobbs inside. He squirms and fights his way inside the 30. Jack Sherman makes the tackle. It's going to be shy of the first down, but not by a whole lot. Chad Mott, the right guard, has got a great cutoff block there. In the business of reach block, and he just knocked his man down. Third down and two upcoming for Wofford. Line of scrimmage is the 27 of Georgia Southern. Big play right here. But here again, All both right, these yeah. coaches four I down territory. I guarantee you, it's gonna be, it could be fourth and one. They're going for it. First down. Hobbs still on his feet. Hobbs inside the ten, inside the five. It'll be first down and goal to go. Wofford. Tariq Muhammad made the touchdown saving tackle. Momentum is strictly with Wofford right now. See a lot of walking around on Georgia Southern, whether they're getting tired or. A little bit upset. Great play by Hobbs. Third and less than two. And he just. I know you and I are both over the hill, but I think either one of us could have run through that scene. <laughs> Touchdown. Wofford. And that one. <laughs> the big block number 79, Brad Barencott, who just drilled Georgia Southern's white shirt back into the end zone. And Wofford is up 20 to 14. They're two for two in their first two possessions of the sec uh, second half. They're not taking any prisoners right now. Well, how big was that tournament? Oh, yeah, that, that, that start of this half just changed the whole ball game. Extra momentum. point is good. Momentum is clearly with Wofford. Terriers are two for two in the touchdown department here in the first two possessions of the second half. Wofford with a 21 to 14 lead over Georgia Southern. 7 41 to go in the third quarter. The fourth. Well, for the third time this half, Wofford's going to be kicking off to Georgia Southern. Now we're going to see if uh, the leadership, the player leadership on the Georgia Southern team, the senior, junior leaders of this football team, are going to pull these guys together now. And somebody has to step up, whether it's going to be Foster or going to be Jermaine, uh, whether it's going to be the offensive line. 
but somebody has to step up and, and get them out of this rut they're in, or they're in trouble. Davenport's kick, Robinson's kick, rather, one yard deep in the end zone. Taken by Kraft. Kraft fights his way out near the 20. And Georgia Southern will put it into play. First down and 10 from that point. Scoring drive for Wofford, 80 yards, 338, eight plays. Hobbs with a three yard touchdown. Hobbs had a lot to do with that drive. Yes, he did. Had the big play that set yes, it up sir. inside the five. Let's see if Georgia Southern can answer. 7.34 to go in the third quarter. Jason Foster is the quarterback. Foster keeping and nothing there. Georgia Southern had the hole, but it filled up quickly. Justin Franklin filled it up first from his linebacker spot, making the play at second down and 10 from the 20. They have denied Georgia Southern the opportunity to pitch the ball in any options today. And I think that's probably why they're not running them anymore. Those are basically sweeps and off tackle plays out of, out of their offensive sets. Two receivers right, one left, and a penalty marker. Georgia Southern jumped on the right side of that line. That's right going to the, cost them five. Right guard. Chad Moat. He moved. Fighter set. Ball start. 71 offense. Five yards. Still second down. Chad Moat. Second down. A little anxious. 15, we back it up to the 15 yard line. Now you watch Walker back those defensive backs off of the hair. Jason Foster has gone all the way quarterback, sophomore from Canton, Georgia. Drops back, rolls right, keeps it back up the middle, makes a move to the 20, got some running room to the 30, has the first down on his feet. Ooh. Clobbered by three black shirts among the Great first hit. to get there. Dedrick Stuckey was there. So was Jason Leventis. But a good job by Jason Foster, and that's a first down for the Eagles out near the 32 the first yard time line. He's had an opportunity to get in the open and run a little bit and show what he can do in, out in the open field. He's been bogged down pretty well tonight until that play right there. Georgia Southern first down inside handoff Austin still on his feet Austin first down 10 yards for Austin as he crosses the 45 Justin Franklin makes the tackle great second effort kept his legs pumping first down pickup of about 10 man Austin, right, right. Austin's he had to push alone, his offensive he? lineman out of the way they had to push Anderson out of the way there Austin's a steer. Not Anderson, but. Lance Wayne, the center for Georgia Southern. Hand off Austin again, gets eight. Inside Wofford territory to the 45 as we go under six minutes to go in the third quarter. For me, Austin's been one step away from breaking three or four runs tonight. Big runs. Gaby Debo, nose tackle for Wofford, makes the tackle, but not before Austin picks up eight. Second down and two. And it's Austin again. This time, not much there. He's close to a first. He's going to be about a foot short, it looks like. Third down and a foot upcoming. Leighton Baker put the hit on him for Wofford. Mark his forward progress about six inches Major shy of the first down. Actually, it's close yeah, enough to measure with 516 to go. Got a good spot on the uh, on this play. Get this uh, measurement. I'm running behind Chad Moat. It's short by about what four inches, five yeah, inches maybe. Bit, but you can bet it's uh, it's in two play territory. Yeah, no question. <laughs> It's so important for Georgia Southern to keep moving the football. If they give the ball up and give up another score, this game could be over. 5.16 to go. A lot of time here in the third quarter. Georgia Southern is driven from their own 20 down to the Wofford 43-yard line. 
two receivers come left for Georgia Southern, but you know they're not going to throw it here. Foster's numbers tonight, 50 yards, two out of three passing, one pick. Straight ahead. Nice job of blocking by the offensive line, and it's a first down for the Eagles. They came out nice and low and hard. Baker and Debo make the tackle for Whopper. First down as we mark it to the 41. See what uh, Wofford's doing over there playing man to man in zone in the series in the secondary. Inside they go to Austin who fights his way does a good job to get inside the 40 but not much there. They're going to give him about three on the carry. Jim Thurman. Makes the tackle for Wofford. It'll be second down and about eight. There's Brian uh, Brandon Andrews there. He's, he's he's limping off. Yeah, Andrews was the ball carrier. Is Austin is back in the game. He didn't get much of a rest, did he? No, he didn't. <laughs> One play. One play. <laughs> Give it to Austin. Not much there. He gets a yard, maybe two. Now Georgia Southern faced with a third and long. The inside linebackers are doing a good enough job that when the, the motion starts coming this way. 18 rushes, 78 yards. You would think he has more than that. Well, they haven't stopped him, but they have contained him. Yeah. I'm sure that's what their goal was defensively for Whopper. Third down and seven. Pick up by Austin of one yard. And that last carry. Big play right here. The line of scrimmage, the 38 of Wofford. Back to throw. Scrambled. Hit. Dropped at the line of scrimmage is Foster. It will be fourth down. Leighton Baker, the first black shirt to get there. And Wofford is forced a fourth down. They're going to say he lost about a foot. Everybody was covered in the secondary. Georgia Southern is going to bring on the punt team. Dan Jordan will punt. It's fourth down and eight. Everybody was covered and Foster with those. What do you call them, Coach? Happy feet. He, yeah. he kind of danced out of there and danced well, right he, into He had a little pressure and he had no seam to, to hit. And he did a good job defensively containing him. Jordan, a high kick. This could be a good one. It's going to hit. Or bounced a little too far. Save oh, back job. after the two yard line. Great job by number 11 of the Georgia Southern Eagles. That's David Willingham. He got down there, knocked it back into the two yard line. Great punt by Jordan. Great play by Willingham. And now let's see if Georgia Southern's defense can take advantage. Well, we saw Wofford come out of that end zone in the first half. Right. Started at the back six. The five yeah. yard line, yeah. and uh, they're capable of doing it. This is a big, a big, big stand for Georgia Southern. Time winding down at the end of the, the end of the third quarter here. Georgia Southern's defense, the last couple of Wofford possessions, has looked winded. So they got a little bit of a breather that time. Yeah, they had a little rest because they had a few first downs, but they they don't look as sharp as they did in the first half overall. First down at the two. Collier calling signal hands to Hobbs and they clog the middle up. He still gets out near the five. Great surge by that Wofford front line. It's a little surprising to see how much stronger the Wofford offensive line looks than the defensive line of mm -hmm. Georgia Southern. They're moving the whole line frequently during this ball game, and, and I'm, I'm a little surprised at that. Georgia Southern, one of three Southern Conference teams ranked in the top 25. One double A poll this week. Wofford got some votes. There's Cotty. Three numbers. completions and eight attempts for 37 yards. Numbers on Cotty. Inside, Hobbs takes it to the six. It'll be third down. A.J. Bryant makes a nice tackle because Hobbs almost spun he, away. He from almost him. spun out of that. That would have been real trouble for Georgia Southern. So now it's third and four. Big play coming up here for Georgia Southern because this is not four down a little, territory. We got a little uh, appeal by 87 down there for Georgia Southern. Talking to officials about holding. 
<laughs> He's not getting much uh, satisfaction. Third down and four. Line of scrimmage is the seven yard line. This play is huge. Wofford's had trouble punting the ball tonight, had a couple partially blocked. If they don't get a first down. Wofford calls time, 113 to go in the third quarter, and it's a 21 to 14 Terrier lead. They haven't saved their timeouts in the first half. They didn't have any left, but they felt this was important enough to not make a mistake. All right, former teammates are going to face off when Southern Arkansas meets Wachita Baptist. It will be Thursday at 7 on CSS. Tiger head coach Todd Knight and new rider head coach Steve Quinn play together at OBU. Gulf South football Thursday at 8 on CSS. I'll be there, coach. I'll be watching that game. I might be in my recliner. <laughs> I'll watch it from there. From there. That's where I'll be watching. One minute, 13 seconds to go in the third quarter, and I believe it's taken us longer to play this third than it did the whole first half. It seems like it's been a long quarter. Big play right here. Wofford wants to keep it. Yeah, their fans are up, standing up now. On the far side of the field, Georgia Southern's fans are up too. Third down and four. Collier's going to move to the shotgun. Collier fakes, rolls to his left, dumps it out. It's caught, and it will be a first down. Amazing. Caught by Brandon Barrett. The throw was a, low. He yeah. Great catch, huh? And it's a first down for Wofford with 103 to go. Wofford's making the plays when they have to. It's after the 12. He needed four. He picked up about four and a half. That defensive back was way off the line of scrimmage. Well, here's an interesting stat. Georgia Southern has not allowed an opponent 300 yards rushing in a game since November of 2000. Wofford has 303 tonight, and they are not even the finished with the third quarter. Yeah. Hobbs with a carry. Tariq Muhammad, the first of several white shirts to get there as we're under a minute to go in the third quarter. And that is likely going to be the last play of this quarter. Wofford showed a lot of poise and a lot of confidence in, in uh, running their offense. And Wofford's going to let the clock run, and that will be the end of the third quarter as we take another look. A good job of protecting the ball in traffic. It's we going to be tough now, Randy, to contain them. They're, they've got a lot of momentum going. We start the fourth quarter. 21-14. Wofford has taken the lead. We'll be back to Spartanburg with a fourth and final period here in just a moment. Wofford's got the football at the 13, actually the... Uh, 16-yard line. It's second down. They're doing a good job changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Collier to keep it. Right side. Got some running room. First down. Near the 30 and finally stopped. He stays in bounds. T.J. Rutledge makes the tackle, but Wofford gets another first down. This is what we talked about all night. Assignment football. Nobody had the quarterback. The outside guy went with the pitch man and the seam was wide open. Either that or he, he bit on the fullback. Two receivers left, one right, one setback behind Collier. Now Jackson goes into motion. Hand off to Hobbs. He crosses the 35. Great effort by Hobbs to stay on his feet. And he turned what was a three-yard gain into about a six or seven-yard pickup. A lot of people probably forgot where this drive started, but it started back inside the five. Right. Jason Earwood makes the tackle for Georgia Southern. It's a pickup of seven. That's some missed tackles there, but good offensive run. Second down and less than three upcoming. 
14.05 to go, and now there's a timeout. Officials call a timeout, and they're going to talk about something. I'm not sure what it is, but they're talking about it. Well, they're not going to tell us what it was. So it wasn't <laughs> no, that big a deal. No signal. Now we go again. 14 minutes to go. Clock is moving. Now Wofford to the line. And keep in mind, only 10 seconds on the game clock. Collier inside. Hobbs to the 40. Very close to a first down. David Willingham makes the tackle from his middle linebacker spot for the Eagles. But as they unstack, Georgia we're going to call time. Now they say it's a first down for Georgia Wofford. Southern doesn't seem to have an answer for Hobbs. Well, the Wofford oh. offensive line pretty much has whipped Georgia 21 Southern's rushes, front. 21 yeah. rushes for 96 yards and two TDs for Hobbs. He's having a great night. First down, Wofford is there at the 41. 13 14 to go. Clock moving, and the clock is definitely in the Terriers' favor right now. Collier takes the pitch to the 40. Collier to the 50. Still on his feet inside Georgia Southern territory at the 41. Jason Earwood knocks him out of bounds, and it's a first down for the Terriers. Beautiful fake pitch there, and tucked it back inside. This drive has now been about 50 some yards. Collier did a great job of running that option right there. Watch the fake right there. And George Southern had great pursuit, but they just didn't have the same speed. Shows me they're tired. Because you know <laughs> I, when they I, started, I, they're all as fast as those guys. I think you're right. I, you look a little sluggish. 12.42 to go. Time of possession sure can walk the favor in this half. Hobbs, nothing there. Georgia Southern pitches it up and stops him at the 40. Jerry Barker makes the tackle from his defensive tackle spot. He's a redshirt freshman, 6'4", 295. 12 minutes to play. If, if <clears throat> nothing there that time. Football is just inside the 40. It's second down and about nine and a half. Hand off to Hobbs again. This time he gets better yardage inside the 35. He's going to be about three yards short of the first down. It'll be third and three. I keep repeating this, but the five interior linemen for Wofford are beating. Georgia Southern's down people. Mm -hmm. They're pushing them off the ball. They're in their chest. They're in their thighs. They're, they're doing an excellent job. Third down and four. They say a Hobbs knee touched at the 35. Cosby. Three on the game clock. First set up, and Congress going to be hit for a loss of about 10 back to the 45. Tariq Muhammad was the first to get there. I think it was going to be a fake reverse, but the guy coming this way didn't, he stopped. There was a little confusion there. Nevertheless, it's a 10 yard loss, and Georgia Southern is going to force a punt. That so the Eagles buckle down and get it done when they needed to. Looks like the, the pitch man stumbled. Mm -hmm. And right before the punt by Chris Tommy, a Georgia Southern timeout. First of this half for the Eagles with 10.39 to go could, in the fourth quarter. That could be a real turning point in this ball game. Georgia Southern gets a little momentum now. They got the ball in good shape. They're going to get the ball at least. They're going to get it back with 10 minutes to play. And then they've got a mile to drive. 
Georgia Southern took a 7 0 lead as they capitalized on a partially blocked punt in the first quarter. They went 32 yards, took a 7 0 lead. Wofford came right back down and tied it. Then Georgia Southern scored to go ahead 14 7 at the half. But Georgia Southern has been unable to cross the end zone again this game. And Wofford, with two touchdowns in the third quarter, has a 21 14 lead. Still a lot of time left, 10 39 to go in the game. Catch a two hour professional boxing showcase. It'll be coming, from, coming up from the Gwinnett Center in Atlanta. It'll be coming up next here on CSX. Beautiful night, not a cloud in the sky, full moon over Spartanburg, South Carolina. And we get the two winningest teams in the Southern Conference over the last three years, Wofford and Georgia Southern, another classic battle. And you think you're going to see a punt block attempt here? I don't think they'll have a return on. They're going after this kick. Back deep for Georgia Southern just in case he gets it off. Teddy Craft penalty marker goes down. He gets it off. It's going to hit at the three yard line. We'll have to see what this flag's all about, but I'll tell you what, if it's against Georgia Southern, I think Wofford will decline it and give Georgia Southern a oh, ball yeah. inside the five. And I think it is against Georgia Southern. We'll, we'll see. Uh, the headlines one's on the other side. The near side judge here made that call. The side judge made that call. They're from, both of them threw their flag, so it was pretty obvious to them, but it wasn't to us. So we back it up five, and punting it again will be Chris Tommy, number 31 for Wofford. Now, what a, a great break for Georgia Southern. Oh, yeah. they might, that's something they may need. It, it, it could really help them. Tommy's average just under 41 yards. His longest has been 60, 60 tonight. Georgia Southern is going to try to return it. This one's going to be short. It's going to hit right in the middle. Fair caught by Kraft at the 21. So a big break. Instead of Georgia Southern getting it at the 3, they get it at the 21. It's almost a 20-yard difference. And they're not coming out of the shadow of their goalpost. And with that, we'll take a timeout. 10 minutes, 20 seconds to go here in the ball game. It's been a good one. Georgia Southern trailing Wofford, 21 to 14. The Eagles have the ball. Our today, our today's TIAA, TIAA Kreff. I'll get it right in a minute. Student athlete of the week is Elon's John Tumbleston. He is a senior from Boone, North Carolina. He led the Phoenix cross country team to a third place finish overall at the UNC Wilmington Seahawk cross country invitational on Friday, September 9th. In the classroom, he's a double major in science education and physics with a 3.99 grade point average. Rolling right with the football, the keeper, a lot of room for Foster. Foster follows his blockers. Foster with speed. Makes another move inside the 30 down to the 25 and it's a first down for Georgia Southern all the way to the 25 yard line and that my friends 46 yard run and, and a saving tackle it's matching speed for speed here catches and deny a touchdown. Great job and he followed the blocker that picked him up 20 yards right there. Got another five to ten right here. Big play by Foster. Foster, quick pitch. Comes to Raja Andrews, and he doesn't have much around that left side. Leighton Baker, defensive end on the right side for Wofford, the first to get there. He picks up a couple, and that's it. Foster's got to be in pretty good shape. He just went back to the huddle, called to play. And he's not, he doesn't have his hands on his, on his knees or his hips. And, <clears throat> Give that a little of that energy to their defense here. Second down eight. Georgia Southern going for what would be the tying touchdown if they can convert. Foster inside. Nothing there for Austin. Justin Franklin, the first black shirt to hit him. 
And it's going to be third and long for Georgia Southern. Big play here. Big, big possession play coming up. We have close to 600 yards rushing between the two, two teams. teams. Typical battle between these two teams, though. Third down, six. Line of scrimmage, the 22. Georgia Southern down by seven. Foster rolling right. Keeps it. Falls to the 20. Has the, uh, is not, oh, is going to be shy of the first down. Barely. Kyle Horn makes the tackle. Excuse me, barely to the line of scrimmage. And I guess we're going field goal. 8.20 to go, clock moving. Georgia Southern wants the points. It would be their first points of this half. If they convert, it's fourth and five, gain of a yard only for Foster. They wouldn't have a fake uh, field goal, would they? Mike wouldn't, Sewak wouldn't do that, would he? Well, he threw it when you thought he was going to run it out, run out the clock in the first half. Snap down, kick is up. It is long enough, and it is good. Nice kick. They still have to score a touchdown to win this ball game. I guess Mike didn't want to play for a tie. 36-yard field goal that time by the Eagles' Jonathan Dudley. Four-point game. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. Well, Georgia Southern's going to be faced now with doing something they haven't done much this half. That stop offer. They have to. They have to make a stop here, and they have to make it before they forcing Wofford to punt down inside the 10 yard line, which they've been successful doing tonight. Dudley to kick, Kemp and Gray back deep to receive. A yard deep in the end zone is Kemp. Up the middle, got room. Dudley tripped him up. Finally, they bring him down shy of midfield and had it not been for the kicker, the Jonathan kicker. Dudley, Gray would have put six on the scoreboard. He brought it out of the end zone. His teammates didn't put the signal to stay in there and take a knee. Watch the speed. He just turns it into a second gear right there. Now well, Dudley made the made the uh, there are a lot he of didn't good. make the tackle, but he slowed him down and allowed another white shirt to get there. there are a lot of good athletes in this league. Huh? 48. That's the yard line. Collier at quarterback. First down. Waffer. Pitch. Dave Jackson to the 50. Inside the 50 to the 49. John Mooring makes the tackle. An important thing, the clock keeps running. He didn't go out of bounds, so the clock's running. That's valuable time going off that clock. I'm sure Coach Ayers would have tried to shove him back in there <laughs> he got off. <laughs> well, Wofford's got an uh, intelligent uh, athletes, and I, uh, these guys, I'm sure, know when they want to keep the clock running. Gain of three, second down, seven. Line of scrimmage, the Georgia Southern 49. Seven minutes. They're going to milk this game clock all the way down to two or one before they snap it. We know that. Hobbs with a handoff. Hobbs to the 45. It's going to be a pickup of three more. It'll be third down and about four. His defensive lineman, George Southern, weren't sure he had the ball there. He, he ran right by him for two or three yards. This is a huge play. All right. Third and four. Actually about three and a half. Line of scrimmage just shy of the Georgia Southern 45 yard line. Is Hobson man again? Or Jackson? He's going to see a, a toss pitch. Inside the keep. Nothing there. Georgia Southern stepped up twice now to stop it. Jerry Barker. First man to get there, and now Wofford is going to probably punt the football right at midfield. Penalty marker has been dropped, and Wofford is pointing to Georgia Southern. I believe there's a broken play again. Right? <clears throat> Personal foul would be would be disastrous for Georgia Southern. We're just discussing it now. 
But there can one player was consoling another on the Georgia Southern side of the ball. That's Shaheen Solomon. Dead ball foul. <clears throat> Just when Georgia Southern had him stopped, forcing him to punt. 15 yards moves it down to the 32, and Wofford has it first down. Well, they get 10 or 15 more yards, they could. That'd be in field goal range. Field goal range. And, and again, you're back to the seven point deficit. First down, 32 yard line. Under six minutes to go in the game. There's the pitch. Georgia Southern had it smelled out. Dunn loses back to the 40. That's a loss of about six. Jason Earwood was there to get it. It's another big play. It's a momentum changer right there. And I don't think Wofford's going to put the ball up. I'd be surprised if they put the ball up. It penetrated from the outside. Here comes the linebacker. Boy, Earwood has had his name called a lot, hasn't he? He's a lucky football player. 6'2, 233, a junior from Fayetteville, Georgia. Gabe Jackson, 88 yards, 16 carries. Second down and 17. Hand off, number two. That's Terrence Ware, gets his first carry of the night. John Mooring make, knocks him out. Up bounds. He picked up a couple. That's it. It's going to be third and very long. Looks like Georgia Southern's got their second win. They're getting awful aggressive now. They're coming after him. They're, they're coming off the corners. They're penetrating into the pitch area and they and they behind the line of scrimmage. Five minutes and one second left. Big, big play for Georgia Southern here. Third down. Done in motion. Coggle sprinting to his left. Lobbing it. Picked off oh. at the 10-yard line. Intercepted by Georgia Southern. I guess that's better than a punt rolling dead inside the five, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Better for Georgia Southern, that's for sure. 4.50 to go. The Eagles get the football back, and we'll take a look at it again. They, they got good contained pressure here at the point when he's ready to throw the ball. Throw it off balance across his body. Most there of those are picked off. They should have just thrown it out of bounds. Absolutely. Was he outside the tackle box? If he wasn't outside the tackle box, it'd be a penalty. Well, I think he was. I think he rolled left. Yeah, he did. He rolled yeah. out. First down, Georgia Southern. Line of scrimmage is the Eagle 11. Foster keeps it himself. Cuts back up the middle. Good yardage. First down, crossing the 20 to the 23. Casey Cooper makes the tackle for Wofford. Time is starting to be critical right here. Clock stops momentarily for the marking of the ball and the movement of the chains. Now they started back up 438, 437. Two wide receivers right for Georgia Southern. Foster, Austin, nothing there. To the 26, pick up of two maybe. Kyle Horn makes the tackle. They are loaded to the right side here. They have unbalanced line. Four twelve, four eleven. Clock running. Austin's going at. Right in uh, thirty-four. Gain of three. Second down. Seven. Line of scrimmage to twenty-seven. Foster drops back. In trouble. Keeps it himself. Little running room to the left. Crosses the thirty. Has close to first down yardage according to where they mark it. He's getting a favorable mark. I mean, if they mark it where the official standing, that's a first down. Yep. Casey Cooper makes the tackle for Wofford. But a pickup of seven for quarterback Jason Foster. That took a pretty good lick right there, too. That hit pretty hard. Line of scrimmage just shy of the 35. First down and 10. They give it to. Andrews, who gets good yardage, crosses the 40. Brandon Andrews, 5'10", senior from Swainsboro, Georgia, the backup for Jermaine Austin. 
Austin looked a little tired when he went out of there. He might be hurting a little bit. You know, he had that mouth concussion last week and was listed as probable on Wednesday. Andrews gets seven. Second down and three. The clock is moving. A little daylight there to run to. Foster. Bounced it at the feet of the intended receiver. It was Darius smiling in a quarterback. Foster may have had to come out for a, to, just to get a breath. He, he took a, a pretty good hit. Yeah. Smiley was the quarterback. Pass was about eight yards in length and it was about a yard short. Third down and three. Nine rushes for 10 yards. Pitch back. First down, Georgia Southern crossing the 45. The question is, where's Foster? That changes the whole dimension of what Georgia Southern's capable of doing. Lenon Jefferson, the ball carrier, gets the first down. Brian Ford makes the tackle. Now we're under three minutes. Foster is back in. With Foster out of there, you take their quarterback threat of run out of the game. Georgia Southern has gained 34 yards in two minutes. Foster back in. Good yardage. Picks up eight, maybe nine, according to where they mark it. Time's becoming a real factor. 2.30 left on the clock. Georgia Southern has two timeouts. So does Wofford. Third to seven is splitting their wide out extremely far to the sideline to try to get open up seams here. It's coming almost to the sideline over here. Second down and two after the eight yard pickup by Foster. Loose football. It's on the ground. It's been recovered by Walker. Turnover number four on Georgia Southern and you can add a 15 yard penalty. Jermaine Austin took his helmet off and threw it on the ground. That, that is definitely a, uh, <laughs> a misconduct foul. It could be an ejection if it's serious enough, if there were some words with it. Two minutes and four seconds away from going one and zero in the Southern Conference and dropping Georgia Southern to zero and one, one and two on the year. That's Here's shocking. another look. Oh, he had the ball in his hip. He never did have the football. Nope. The handoff was right on his hip. Fourth turnover of the game for Georgia Southern. That has really cost him. Ten solo tackles, seven assists, one interception. That's not a bad evening. Georgia Southern's going to have to keep them from making a first down if they have any chance to get another possession. Hot. First down, not a first down, on first down. Good yardage inside the 40. Picks up about six. You don't think Wofford's going to work in their passing game right now, do you? Don't believe so. The, the longest pass you're going to see is that snap from center to the quarterback's <laughs> hands. Georgia Southern has two timeouts, but they're not calling it. I think they may if this this play is stopped. If they get a near first down, they don't have much much of a chance to uh, stop it enough times. Wofford breaks the huddle. Ten seconds on the game clock. I guarantee you they're not going to snap the ball until it gets to zero. Well, it is. Three seconds. Hobbs straight ahead. He's going to be shy of the first down, I think, but not by much. You know, the talk this evening's all been about Jermaine Austin, but Hobbs is, is oh, yeah. kind of taking the spotlight tonight. Hobbs has had a great game for Wofford. 111 yards, 24 carries, two touchdowns. Not a bad evening's work. And we'll take a break. They'll take a timeout. We'll take a break with them. Catch our breath. 111 left. Wofford with a four point lead over Georgia Southern. We'll be back. The four. I forgot about you staying in Maryland. Appreciate it. 
21 17 a minute 11 seconds left in the game. Wofford Hobbs gets the first down I believe we'll have to see as they unstack he needed a yard and he picked up about a yard we'll see that's a formation you haven't seen that was totally unbalanced there was only one one lineman to the left of the center. Well as they unstack they're going to call time and measure. 61 seconds left in the game. And they're going to stretch it out. And it's short by about three inches. Well, our bb &T player of the game is Michael Hobbs. On behalf of Wofford, bb &T will make a contribution to the general scholarship fund of the Southern Conference. At the end of the year, the money will be divided among the member institutions. That's good news for Wofford, bad news for the rest of the Southern Conference. He's only a sophomore. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, he is. He's had a great game tonight. And just about all of his yardage has come right up the middle. Oh, uh, power running. I yeah. mean, good quickness and, and extremely strong. This comes from a kid who's 5'10", 190. 190. He's had a great evening. You know, when, when somebody like that is a sophomore keeps blossoming, I, I, I always hope their parents can see them play when they're at that stage of their career. Well, if Wofford will make this three-inch gain on fourth down, mm -hmm. the game is over. Georgia Southern has no timeouts. They could not stop the clock. And looking at the future schedule, Wofford has, is at Chattanooga, then Elon at home, VMI at home, and Appalachian State at home. The schedule is very favorable for Wofford to win the next several weeks. Western Carolina uh, victory over Furman last week has given notice to the league that maybe yeah. their program's back. Yep. Well, Chattanooga was 2-0 and for the first time since 97. Yeah, I thought maybe they were coming back, but it looks like they're getting handled pretty easily by Memphis, but if that score is correct that we have up here, uh, well, we don't want, maybe not want to repeat. Here we go. <laughs> Big play, fourth and inches. Jackson in motion. Collier now calls time. He was trying to draw him oh, off sides. Absolutely. In that, it, they've been running up and down the field for 300 and some yards, and they got about <laughs> three inches, and they're trying to draw the other team off sides. I'm sure they're confident. They'll run the play if they have to. I, there's no way they're going to kick and give up the ball. Well, they have, still have three inches to make right yeah. here. Coach Seawalk is talking to his defense. He's a one more play. Listen, get, the get the ball back the for interior us. that Wofford line has controlled the line of scrimmage most of the night and I don't think they're going to back off now. Wofford 64 rushes 354 yards in rushing offense. They pass for 42 that's 300 400 and 96 yards, 396, 396. You know that percentage of 119 runs out of 148 plays, that's going up. Yeah. Catch a two-hour professional boxing showcase from the Gwinnett Center in Atlanta. It's coming up next. We still have 61 seconds, fourth down inches. Cogger takes it. I believe he's got it. Yeah. The surge will move him ahead. If it is, the game is over. If the officials mark coming in from the head linesman, sure looks like it. Now, where he, if he puts that ball down on his right foot or left foot, it does make a difference. Mm -hmm. And some guys, times these guys just get a little weary there. They may not even measure. Well, they're yeah, going to have to just to be sure they're going to measure. I don't know if he's got it, Coach. It's going to be awfully close. I'll he needed three inches. He uh, may have I gotten think he three got and it, a half. Boy, I... no, no, he's short. Oh, Georgia Southern as hell. Now keep in mind the Eagles have 58 seconds to work with. They have no timeouts. 
they got a great spot there. I'm not criticizing the officials. I don't mean to do that. From where we, our vantage point up here in the press box is a little different than what that guy's down there is. First down, Georgia Southern. Game is not over yet. It's not over till it's over. Line of scrimmage is the Eagle 33. They got to go. 67 yards at 58 seconds. With, with no timeouts left. Rolling to his right, dumping it off on the right side, incomplete at the 41, intended for number 31. Number 31, Jefferson. And it's incomplete. Ladon Jefferson is a slot back. It was a bad throw. It was outside and low and not very catchable. Second down and 10, 53 seconds. The only thing that really matters for Georgia Southern is the time because they cannot stop the clock. Well, they got the ball back. They got the opportunity. Now they got to do something with it. Pass. Knocked away. Absolutely great. Casey play. Cooper Just knocked that one away. Great play by, by him. Pass was intended for Teddy Kraft, and it's knocked away by Cooper. It's third down and 10 at the 33, 46.6 seconds left. Offers the uh, four men deep. Everybody's covered. Pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Well, I think I'd be looking for the first down here to get some more plays. You can still have 39 seconds. They can make a first down out here by 45, 50 yard line. Justin Franklin got a hand up, batted that pass down by Foster. Georgia Southern's down to a fourth and 10 with just under 40 seconds to go in the game at the 33 yard line. Back to pass Foster. They converge on him, caught. Nice job out of bounds at the 50 yard line by number 21, Raja Andrews. 33 seconds left. A pickup of about 14, 33.4 seconds left. You know, they have enough time left. They don't have to throw to the sideline all the time. They could run a post pattern or the scene pattern, but they're going to have to be good about it. Maybe run a pick play. Foster back to throw. Deep over the middle. Deflected. Deflected again. This time the deflection was number 11, Alex Love. And it's second down, 27.2 seconds left. They're going to get a little breather here. They can't wind the clock to the official spot the ball. So. The line of scrimmage is right on the 50. They got time for three, maybe four more plays at the most. Foster rolling right, throwing, complete, caught by Kraft inside the 45. They'll mark him out of bounds. It'll be third down and about five. Mark him out right at the 45. 22 seconds. Maybe a hook lateral. Whatever happened to the old, what we used to call the button hook. I don't know, man. Let's call it a comeback now. <laughs> A timeout, an official's timeout. It's third down and five. If Georgia Southern has anything up their sleeve, like a hook ladder or anything, now's the time. wofford has got two, three guys playing deep. They got a center fielder back there. The safety valve. And with a four-man rush. Four under, three deep defense. Foster blitzed, sacked the fifth. Who was it? 
Number 21, Kyle Horn. Sacks him at the 50. Kyle Horn filling in for the injured linebacker of West Virginia. Nine seconds. Clock running. Foster back to throw on fourth down. Throws it. Incomplete. And that is the game. The clock runs out. The game is over. And Wofford has held on to defeat Georgia Southern 21 to 17. The Terriers coming back from a 14 to 7 deficit at the half. Another barn burn between these two schools. It's becoming quite a rivalry since they're so similar in, in offensive philosophy. Georgia Southern now three and two here in Spartanburg against the Terriers as they drop a 21 to 17 decision tonight to the Terriers. Wofford improves to two and one. Georgia Southern one and two, but more importantly, Wofford one and zero oh in this conference. Georgia Southern zero oh and one. Georgia Southern's got a lot of work to do to stay in contention for the Southern Conference Championship and/or playoff berth. The uh, Eagles will be back home next week in Statesboro to face Chattanooga. Chattanooga's at Memphis tonight. Final score again, 21 to 17. Georgia Southern loses here at Wofford. For Coach Walt Nadzak, I'm Randy Smith wishing you a good night from Spartanburg, South Carolina.